Hi, my name is Shivam Dangwal and welcome back to Physics for Cause. In the previous video of this particular playlist, we have discussed about the photoelectric effect. We have discussed about the theoretical aspect of the photoelectric effect. Now, in this particular video, I will be going to explain you about the concept of the experimental setup of the photoelectric effect and which was on the basis of Hall-Wasch and Lenard observation. So the particular simulation which you are going to see on your particular screen is all about the observation laid down by Hall-Wasch and Lenard. These were the two scientists who experimentally set up the conclusion for the photoelectric effect. And this particular setup is referred to as photo current. In this particular setup, you might see here there is a vacuum tube and on the left hand side there is a cathode from which electrons are to be emitted because cathode acts as an emitter. And on the right hand side, this one is anode which acts as a collector. This plate is anode. And the material which we are going to use is of the sodium metal here in this particular case. Okay. There is a source of light which acts as a UV rays. Okay. And light of short wavelength is made to fall on the metal plates cathode. Light of short wavelength here the light comes from here towards the cathode. Okay. So here is a the external battery used to maintain the potential difference between the cathode and the anode and here we can see the label of the current in ampere as well. So we will be going to discuss about the fluctuations in the graphs for the current versus battery voltage, current versus light intensity, electron energy versus light frequency. As you can see in this particular simulation here two terms are very much important. Number one is about the intensity and second one is about the spectrum. So if we are going to talk about the particular spectrum here on the extreme left hand side we have ultraviolet rays and on the extreme right hand side we have the infrared waves and we are pretty much sure that on moving towards the left we are actually increasing the frequency increasing the energy but we are decreasing the wavelength. On the contrast if we are going to towards the right side we are actually decreasing the frequency, decreasing the energy magnitude and increasing the wavelength. So let us see the experimental setup for the photoelectric effect now. So. In the previous video, I have discussed about the concept of threefold frequency or referred to as cutoff frequency. What was it? The minimum frequency of incident radiation which may cause photoelectric effect is referred to as threefold frequency. And we have seen the graph for the threefold frequency as well. But here you can see that I have set very low frequency let us say 6, 7, 9 nanometer for which metal? Sodium metal. And if on increasing the intensity, let us say I am increasing the intensity of the light, there is no photoelectrons emitting from the cathode. As you might see here. Here you can clearly see that light of salt wavelength is made to fall on metal plate, sodium metal plate cathode but no electrons are being emitted. Even though if I would increase the level of the voltage because there is a certain minimum frequency required to eject the electrons and that frequency is referred to as threshold frequency. So if on increasing the frequency, increasing the frequency here we can see that there is a certain point where flow of electrons are being observed. Now if I would slightly move towards the left hand side to increase the frequency. Here 
here you can clearly see that here the photo electrons are being emitted from the cathode and collected by the metal plate anode here you can clearly see one thing you might notice that if on decreasing the intensity if i would in decrease the intensity the number of photo electrons will decrease here you can clearly see that if on decreasing the intensity the number of photo electrons will decrease but as i would increase the intensity see notice here at 27% of the intensity the number of photons are this this can be considered as a space charge because the space between cathode and anode contains a number of electrons making a space charge and this charge repels the fresh electron coming from the cathode so this can be considered to be as space charge so these are the photo electrons and the current which is flowing here is referred to as a photo current but as i would increase the intensity here you can see clearly the number of photons or the free electrons increases here you can clearly see one most interesting thing which you need to make sure into your mind is that if we keep decreasing the anode potential by making it more and more negative let i try to make it more negative okay so here you can see the negative potential no electron can reach towards the anode here you can clearly see that no electrons can reach towards anode and the photo current here becomes zero this anode potential this anode potential which just stops the flow of the photo current to reach towards the anode is referred to as stopper potential or we can say it as stopping potential so i hope that you got the concept of threshold frequency and anode potential and stopping potential so this was all about the simulation of photoelectric effect now let us see the experimental setup for this particular arrangement what we have seen in the particular simulation here you can see the uv rays coming from this and light of short wavelength is fall on metal plate cathode and electrons are emitted by the cathode and reach towards the anode the potential difference between the cathode and anode can be maintained with an external battery and the rheostat anode is given the positive potential with respect to cathode and the electron moves towards anode passes through the external circuit and then back to the cathode in this the current flows which is referred to as the photo current okay and the space between cathode and anode contains a number of electron making a space charge this negative charge repels the fresh electron coming from the cathode and if we increase the anode potential more electrons are attracted towards the anode and the photo current increases but after a certain limit the photo current becomes constant and do not increasing as all the electrons are rejected from the cathode and now reaches a this current is referred to as the saturation current on the other hand if anode is given the negative potential with respect to the cathode electrons are repelled and photo current decreases and as we have seen in the particular simulation if we keep decreasing the anode potential by making it more and more negative the photo current becomes zero because no electron can reach towards the anode this anode potential which stops the flow of photo current is referred to as stopper potential or stopping potential okay so this is the particular definition for this particular stopping potential the smallest magnitude of the anode potential which just stops the photo current is referred to as stopping potential as we can see in this particular graph i have plotted this particular graph on the x axis i have taken the anode potential and on the y axis i have taken the photo current so if i am going to talk about in the negative x direction this is negative x direction i have negative v not is referred to as a stopping potential and uh, this is the like the graph and here is the saturation current 
okay so while moving from cathode to anode the electrons does work against the electric field and loses its kinetic energy so the kinetic energy maximum can be referred to as kinetic energy max is equal to work done and we know that work done is equal to q into v where q can be replaced by e v not is the stopping potential so here we can easily get v not is equal to k e kinetic energy max upon e and from the einstein's photoelectric equation we know that kinetic energy maximum is equal to e minus phi where phi is the work function of the metal in this particular case work function for the sodium metal so on uh, substituting the value of v not is equal to ke max by e ke max is what e minus pi by e so here e upon e minus pi by e is referred to as we can represent e as hc by lambda where h is the planck's constant c is the speed of uh, light in vacuum and lambda is the wavelength so here this comes the particular equation and on equating it this to the equation of a straight line we get y is equal to mx minus c and on comparing you get y is v not so on the y axis we are representing the v not or the stopping potential m slope is at c by e so slope is at c by e on the x axis we are representing the 1 by lambda 1 by lambda which is the inverse of the wavelength and here we have c as a intercept in the negative direction of y phi by e so this is the particular graph which i have plotted and one thing you might notice about that the stopping potential depends only upon the wavelength and the frequency of the light and the work function of the metal here you can see that stopping potential depends upon the wavelength or we can say the frequency and the work function of the metal okay so we have seen that on increasing the intensity the number of photons increases energy still remains same why because phi is constant so energy is constant so if i will uh, plot this particular graph where i am representing photo current in the y direction and anode potential in the x axis direction so here comes the intensity i1 i2 i3 but the stopping potential remains same so intensity is increasing i3 is greater than i2 is greater than i1 photo current is also increasing i3 is greater than i2 is greater than i1 but the stopping potential for three cases v not is same for uh, first second and third okay so i hope